Man, it's cold out here. Get All right, welcome back, everybody. Finally getting back to it, and we finally got the car that everybody's kind of been waiting for. I got the motor back. I skipped past the video. I put everything back together, so everything is done. But the car just got here right now. Me and Arlen are going to get started on it, see how far we can actually get. Full interior is done. Both cage went through and through. Uh, this is by a guy that he had, so it's complete. He's gonna be getting a new stairwell, but we're only worried about this. So let's get started with this. Get this back in and get this thing running. Let's just plug and play tomorrow and then fluids should be good to go man oh man hey, look at when it doesn't grip it skips past these teeth right here but it's this piece that's on top that doesn't compress down immediately so it won't grab onto it see it already passed by and now it won't even go now it's sticking straight up but watch you need this you push this down hold it down and it locks in place and now grab it. Now it's engaged. So you just gotta push it down, it seems like, every time. Back in action. Just a little update. Everything is on, everything is in, and then we got fluids, baby. So all the oil is in, cooling in. Just the only thing that we don't have, or I haven't put in, is the uh, power steering. But now, just gonna crank it, get it flowing with some oil a little bit, and then get to the uh, main uh, course. Let's get it going. <laughs> That's where your oil pressure's supposed to be. That's where your oil pressure's supposed to be. <laughs> I didn't want to record everything because we already went through this process, so I kind of like skipped past a lot of stuff. But it's just basically putting the motor and everything back in. But <clears throat> now I'm actually doing a little bit of the custom work. So the upholstery guy didn't know how to put up our little fuse panel for the coyote swap. So he just left it. It was just dangling on the floor. You probably catch it on the video, but I put it up and now I'm just customizing this. So I bent this, this was this part right here. That was a uh, curved, made it flat, chopped it down a little bit. And you'll see exactly why, because there's a lot of stuff in the way. Don't hate me, but this ain't mine. Custom, custom interior on a Fox body. To dial in this thing in, as you guys can notice, the, uh, the power steering is on. So trying to basically find this leak, but I think we got our culprit. This line right here, this is the line that we actually got from the shop. They compress it on and everything, but I don't know what's going on. I don't know. Everything is tight, but I think this is this area is not on the flush correctly. But while driving it, it would smoke. It was squirting and leaking on the valve cover and actually squirting down here. And last night, somehow, some way, made this... Uh, this here puddle so it was off but i don't know how it even look at the header back there look at that Woo. but look let me show you guys it actually only works when pressing on the brakes this is strange too all right so summing up some issues on this and the reason for it starting and then not starting and then kind of like overloading on the relays. It's crazy. You unplug the battery and then it goes back to normal and the relays aren't blown and everything acts functional, everything acts normal, which is weird. Before we sent it off to upholstery, we got over 300 miles on it, cranking it, firing it up, going to the gas station, stop and start, stop, start, stop, start. And then all of a sudden now we have starting issues, which is weird. I was just trying to knock out this, the, uh, the problems by troubleshooting things. So we have the ground on the back of the block 
which is I think to the head, but we don't have any other straps on there. Or we just got this today. I'm gonna put this on the mount, put it on the body and see what kind of difference we have. Um, I didn't test it because I'm the only one here by myself. I've seen multiple ones where you can put the key in and act like you're about to start the car and you actually crank it. And then if the actual test light comes on, you'll have it on the ground and then you'll have the test light itself on one of the bolts on the block and then it'll turn on if it is not a good ground um there's also a voltmeter one but not gonna get down into it because i'm gonna just do it but this will be the second strap so one's on the, the back of the engine the head and then this one so i'm, I'm hoping that it does fix that problem but look at this arlen did this by accident this is so precise and so perfect fits the the motor mount bolt perfectly i'm gonna put this on knock this out i know there's like i try to look online i think there was like two straps or three straps that came on the coyotes but we will see so let me get to this and then see if that fixes the issue also i forgot to mention did the spark plugs so got the ngk's something something i forgot what it is already but anywho got the ngk's got those gaps perfectly for the supercharger setup put them in installed them and now we got a juicy ground strap on there to the motor and then we actually have the ground right here for the actual engine harness. Now we'll be jacking it down. Also, the line that was leaking in the video. This line was actually leaking. It was one of these that was like compressed on there or whatever screwed on there. But they actually got us one that actually goes to a tractor, 5,000 PSI, which we'll never even exceed at all. But got that replaced. So no more leaking, no more spewing out everywhere and creating smoke so everything should be buttoned up now it's just focusing on the air conditioning and figuring out why that's not working and then i'll be done with this vehicle all right let's jack it down see about test driving it and go from there so tuning it right now gotta go to 2500 to 4500 slowly creeping think i gave an update on that uh the kick panel so i cut it did a little tweaking with it now i just need the uh velcro strap like a double-sided sticky to push that down push the carpet side down because it's uh pushing up on the uh the fuse box or it's not pushing up on it but it's hitting the first part which is like right here in this section so it kind of kicks it out but this part i'm heated up and folded back that way so it kind of helped but now i just need a velcro strap right there and for some reason now it's hitting this side it wasn't hitting that when we were test driving it the 300 miles so i gotta figure out what's up with that maybe i need to scoot the k member back but it can't really go back anymore because this is how it was before which was the wiring going through this way i think if not, I can take it out and reroute it somewhere else, but. So I'm pretty much wrapped up and finished. Um, so what I was doing was I was cleaning this area up. So the main harness for the O2 sensors actually went behind the K member through the frame row right here. And uh, if you guys didn't see before, it actually was super close to the header. So I was just like, all right, let me try to just reroute it and see. So I wrapped it through the actual K member across, bolted it down, locked it in. This one was actually dangling very close to the header. Now, as you can see, it's very far. You can't really see, but yeah, got some space. Locked it down right here. Same with this side. Now I just gotta wrap this tape up because it looks disgusting. But all in all, it's all good. This is not dangling lower than the oil pan, so these should be perfect. So I was thinking about yeah, about taking off this top line, putting that line in between the power steering lines, so that way there would be no issue with this actually burning up I mean, it is an oil line but it'll just be spraying out oil you'd see the pressure drop but i think i'm gonna just do it that way it's just a safety precaution but everything is good now time to put it on the floor and then take it to the alignment shop to get aligned make sure everything is good and we should be good to go back on the ground hopefully the last time 
this wheel seems like it's pushed forward a little bit and I'm starting to, I don't know, that K-member can't go back anymore at all. And on top of that, it's a little tight back there. So definitely can't go back. That's hitting that side still a little bit. It's not as bad. It's actually pretty good on that side. This side, the fender extension, little piece, that actually just moves once this tire hits it. As it hits it, pops in there and it comes back out. So we clean up, get out of here. We gotta be there tomorrow and see actually if this thing can get in line. On for a test run. I'm gonna let this thing warm up a little bit longer. Then I'm gonna hit the road, test it real quick before we actually go to the alignment shop. And then uh, it should be good. Everything's gonna be good now. I torqued everything down. It's tough. But let me get to it. San Diego flood, baby. Look at this. I already got one in here. Look at this. Oh my goodness. Look at the water line. <laughs> this thing was underwater, boy. Goodness. Yeah. GT bumper. Look at that. This is caked in there too. Look at that. Man, oh man. On to the next one. Let's see what we can find. Look at that. Another flood. All right, so doing one more upload. Uh, and then we're just going to do the same thing. We'll just kind of like let it idle for three minutes. And then uh, from idle, do, do the regular RPM rises and then test run it so i'll probably do three or four i'll upload it back to the program that way he can actually see it on file this is their new i guess um their new end gauge but once i get this done it should be finished soon after all this i gotta see why the ac is still not working too so all right all right all done the floor is dry as you can see gonna be jacking up the back right side because uh rubbing that's gonna have to be some banging in real quick i don't know if i'm gonna do it right now because uh, everybody's sleeping but that's because it's early oh look at that oh look at that another one burnt in oh man these exhaust shops man you got to be careful you've got to be more careful only because he could have scooted it over this way and then angled it up this way but you know it is what it is but he's gonna have to deal with that not me all right <laughs> well that's because he hired somebody he hired some exhaust guy to do this stuff but anyways do y'all see anything wet back there because i can't even see anything because my hair gets all stuck but i think it might be the the, the bleeder i don't know Whew. all right scare me a little bit so um looked on the tire because i thought it was a brake fluid and i'm like maybe it's a bleeder but no i look back on the tire and i'm like this kind of looks purple and i look right here hey what do you know it's kind of purple well that ain't coming from the brakes that's coming from down below so his axle was leaking out of this sealed part so that's a question there's nothing soaked on that side but it is for sure this side so we're gonna have to bring it into the guy that did the rear end and uh and get everything lined up with him on this that's probably explaining for the uh squealing of the brakes because they squeal like they're old but they're not so i'm gonna put this back on i'm gonna take a few pictures send it to the owner and then we're, we're solid oh i'm gonna bang this in real quick i'm gonna just say F it. i'm gonna just bang it in as best as i can so that way it stops this from rubbing more and more and starting to chew the tire up because we didn't even go that far and look what it's already doing let me get this going oh. Stay right there, buddy. Put the wheels back on, lock it in, bang this in, take some pictures. Taking it out for another run. Do the first little walk and then uh, taking it to the rear end shop because it's uh, leaking a little bit thin fluid. Let's try to get this on film. We'll see.
So that kind of concludes this video. Dropped off the car at the rear end spot. That way we can get everything lined up with the axle leaking. But everything is good. I'm waiting for the tuner to send back another file. Gonna send them the one that I did. I'm hoping that it's good. But I kind of let off. I, I did let off. I let off at probably like 5,000, maybe like maybe like 55. But I seen the cop and I was like, I can't do it. I, I don't want to do another watt pull until he actually lets me know, okay, it's good to go. So if I need to do it, we'll do it. But anywho. That's it for here. That's it for this video. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. And hopefully we got something even better, which we definitely do. Because I already know what's coming. But uh, y'all go ahead and take care. Show some love to everybody. And appreciate everybody that keeps on keeping on with us. You know know what the ending is. Stang D. We out.